In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Good day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of In Full Zoom. I'm Nestor Lecanto, and we'd like to welcome our guest this week. He is Jerry Cruz, <laughs> who is the president and CEO of the uh, Community First Guam Federal Credit Union. Jerry, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nestor. It's uh, great to be here. Thanks for having us. All right, we wanted to bring you on because you're celebrating the 60th anniversary <laughs> of the credit union on Guam. Tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. So uh, this year we celebrate 60 years of service to the island of Guam. Um, we've been around since 1962, started uh, as a credit union focused on serving members of the civil service, Coast Guard, active duty, Navy, Marines, and have over the years evolved into a community credit union and in the last 20 years have really focused on trying to deliver uh, service to the community of Guam in, in targeted areas and, and targeted space, market spaces. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about how it all got started. Who started it? And uh, you mentioned that the, it was primarily started uh, for uh, military personnel on the island, right? That's correct. So back in 1962, uh, a group of really forward-thinking individuals uh, wanted a place where they can commingle their funds and uh, obtain uh, low-cost loans. Um, these folks uh, put their funds together and as a, and created a credit union. At the time, it was called Navmar Federal Credit Union. Perhaps you remember that name. And it was uh, a, a, an employer-based credit union, which means that their primary focus was uh, Coast Guard, Marines, active duty, Navy active duty, and retired, and then civil servants. And so, um, understandably, a majority of the member base was, was down in the central and southern part of the island. Um, from that real simple business model, they've developed into a, a strong credit union through the 70s and into the 80s and into the early 90s, grew their membership to uh, tens of thousands. And then what happened in the mid to, to late 90s is the BRAC Commission came and um, the, the, the civil servants away. <laughs> a bunch of civil servants uh, were moved off island. And so, you know, in the with the strike of a pen, so to speak, uh, the earth you know, was just moved from underneath the, uh, the credit union. So they lost a bunch of members, lost a bunch of membership. And, they really came to a, um, uh, a crossroads. They, they needed to decide whether they wanted to continue on as a going concern or they were just gonna fold up. And, and fortunately, they decided to continue on and, and decided that they wanted to become a, a community credit union. And so uh, at that time they changed, uh, NAVMAR changed its charter so that its member base now included the, the entire island of Guam. And for the next three or so years, um, they went out and they, they grew membership uh, with the community, uh, through the community of Guam. So a lot of members came from private sector, uh, inside the tourism industry, hotels and restaurants and things of that nature. And um, did that up until around 2000. And that's where we kind of see, uh, if you look at our history, we kind of take a look at 2000 as marking the point where it begins kind of like the Renaissance, the new age of, of the credit union. What, what the board at that time realized was that they were really good at managing and, and serving civil servants because that's all they've done for the, all their life. An active duty military, they knew that market, they knew that demographic, and they found real success in that niche. But they were having a struggle trying to uh, keep that same business model for the entire community of Guam. And so... Um, Management at the time, the board at that time, decided to go and, and recruit new management and make a uh, concerted effort into developing the company so that it could effectively compete with the uh, likes of many of the financial institutions here on island. And so they brought a new management team on. Um, we recreated the business plan. We strategized and and, you know, we kept the things that made NAVMAR successful. And frankly, what made NAVMAR really successful was they stayed um, in tuned and focused on what they were good at. And they were good at taking care of a niche. And they were good at taking care of uh, a certain demographic, understanding it and building their products 
around that niche. And so we kind of kept that philosophy. And so we still think of ourselves as a boutique, as a, as a niche player in this big market. And so it is not unlike us to turn away from certain businesses because we, we just don't feel it fits our niche. And um, as a result of that, and staying close to our knitting, we've managed to peacefully coexist with many of the larger players here on the island and still find real success in our, in our own business model. Yeah. For those who may not remember, some who may not have been around uh, the BRAC that you were referring to, that was the Base Realignment and Closure Commission. And uh, can you just add a little mm -hmm. bit more context? Tell us um, how many um, members were lost at that time when they were, you know, forced to go right. to the mainland or other places for to follow employment. Right. So, so uh, you're correct. It was, uh, it was um, basically emphasis on closure. So at the time, there were tens of thousands of, of civil servants on island, and we and we had, uh, for those of you who've been around long enough, remember um, SRF, the Ship Repair Facility. Um, public works, uh, Naval Supply Depot. Um, and then there were the construction part of the, uh, of, of the civil service. So OICC, I don't know if you remember that acronym, but it was the construction portion of uh, the civil service and then PWC where they ran, where the Navy ran their own power plant. And so all those, all those um, departments, parts of uh, the Navy have since gone away. Some have come back, um, but most of them are still gone. And so we went from tens of thousands of members uh, to just under, I think, 4,000 is it was our was when we saw it, things started bottoming out. Of course, many of members uh, left islands in pursuit of uh, new jobs, but uh, several members uh, retained their membership and some stayed here and retired. Um, but the product mix, you know, when we moved from a member-based credit union to a community chartered credit union, we didn't only um, made, we made some missteps in trying to address the community part of the demographic. We also made missteps in trying to continue to accommodate members who had been with us for, for, a, for a long time. So there was a bit of uh, learning that um, management needed to do uh, in order to be able to accommodate uh, both member groups, both groups of, uh, of members. So we went through our own learning process, but um, it was a very trying time for sure for, uh, for the company. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. And, and can you explain a little bit more about a member-based uh, uh, credit union versus a community-based? Sure. And so it's an employer-based credit union uh, versus a community community-based credit union. So an employer-based credit union is a model of, of, of the past. So um, some really easy examples is Boeing Employees Federal Credit Union, uh, which is a credit union that is there to serve employees of Boeing Corporation or the San Diego um, City and County credit union there to serve, you know, a certain, a certain member group, a certain uh, employer group. Um, that organization is, uh, offers the same amount, same kinds of products, but it's there and their field of membership is uh, usually targeted towards an employer group uh, or an association or a trade group or a union uh, uh, like that. Uh, a community based credit union like ours, like um, Coast 360, uh, is has a field of membership that includes, in our case, the entire island of Guam. All right. And, and while you're at it, can you educate us on the difference between a credit union and a bank? <laughs> sure, sure. So, so easier to explain some of the similarities, and I'll go into the differences. The similarities are clear. Uh, functionally, we offer the same products and services as any other financial institution, bank included. So checking savings, um, mortgage loans, uh, business loans, car loans, and things of that nature, certificates and uh, lines of credits and stuff. So uh, from that standpoint, we look the same. Where we believe our biggest differences has to do with purpose. Uh, 
And, and by that, I mean, we are a, we're kind of like a mutual, our, our organizational structure is such that um, there's not a small group of people who own us. We're a widely held organization. And so members um, come in and they put their, put their deposit with us. And there's no one group that drives uh, decisions. It's a, it's a completely, um, as close as you'll ever get, uh, democratic way of running an organization. And because of that, because of our focus on um, away from necessarily making profits, uh, we believe our focus, therefore, is to accommodate and satisfy the needs of our members. And that doesn't mean we're going to, you know, all members get loans whenever they want it, whatever term they want, whatever interest rate they want. What it simply means is that we are, we exist for the purpose of providing sound financial services to our membership. So as I understand it, in celebration of your 60th anniversary, you, you guys are engaging in 60 acts of service. Can yeah. Explain more about that. So, so it was, uh, um, we've been around for 60 years and, and, you know, part of our success, a big part of our success has been uh, a result of uh, how the community perceives us. And we like to believe that we're strong contributors to, to the island of Guam uh, by way of giving capital as a business, but also by way of, com of, of contributing both in kind and financially to many of the worthwhile organizations here on Guam. And we believe that as a result of our contribution to the community outside our business contribution, uh, the community has, has honored us uh, by keeping us around for the last 60 years. And so we thought that uh, what better way to continue to communicate uh, just how important we believe um, the community is to us, but by um, contributing you know, 60 acts of service to represent our 60, uh, 60 years of being here on island. And so it started um, a couple of weeks ago with an island cleanup. Uh, and for the next 12 months, we are going to be coming up with, the, our, our team is tasked with coming up with uh, different ways to provide, to demonstrate service to the island of Guam. Um, and it's very, you know, there's so many good causes, uh, Nestor, on island. There's so many uh, people who are doing so many good things that um, it's, it, it's uh, the challenge is to, and what I've asked our group to do, and myself included, is find ways that we can kind of uh, widen the net to include more organizations to include uh, more groups that are doing some really fantastic things. There's some real, some ones that um, you don't really hear, you know, you hear a lot about some of the more popular ones, popular organizations, popular nonprofits. There's so many more that are uh, second or third tier down that do, do some fantastic things. And so we wanna be able to some way uh, touch those organizations as well. Tell me about um, how has your business uh, responded to the pandemic? Anything different as a result? Oh, absolutely. So the pandemic taught us one thing, and that is uh, rain or shine, um, uh, reduced hours or not, we have to be there for our members. We have to be there to conduct the business, uh, to do what we do. And that is to provide uh, funds, provide capital, um, and to provide checking and savings accounts to, to transact business. And uh, the pandemic was one clear, one clear ex reason why uh, that it was, it made us aware of that more than, more than any typhoon, more than any earthquake, more than any man-made or natural disaster that could happen. And so um, we have, uh, we made a decision long ago that drive throughs are essential. So uh, during the pandemic, when we had to close our offices, we were able to open the drive throughs and um, that really came in handy. So that turned out to be a very good decision. In the beginning, it was an expensive decision, but it turned out to be a very good one. Um, we think now though that um, this pandemic, typhoon or whatever kind of disaster, we're thinking that we have got to find a way to uh, conduct business and have employees continue to operate and function even though they're not here in the office. And so I know that there are other models out there of hybrid work environments where people can work from home and phone in, tele, um, uh, zoom in, in this case, or in the case of being able to do transactions, uh, run those transactions from home. And so we are working a model that allows our, our team members 
uh, to work from home and be able to transact business, their, do their work uh, from their home. And so they may only need to come into work three, three, maybe four or so times a day. Um, we're proceeding slowly, but that's one thing that resulted from, from the pandemic. Um, and for sure, there are going to be some departments that uh, are easily, uh, can easily adopt to that uh, model, and then some that uh, just can't. But, uh, but we think that that's going to be a good thing. Uh, if we were able to do that, we think we can run longer hours, for example. Um, and our call centers can work into, into you know, shifts and, and things like that. So um, we probably would not have thought of something like that had it not been the, for, for, uh, for the pandemic. But it's forced us to. And sometimes, you know, uh, disasters or catastrophes uh, are when you become the most creative, right? In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. There's, there's a silver lining in there somewhere, right? <laughs> yes, that's true. I, I actually think that I actually think that that's probably going to be uh, the preferred um, method for some for some individuals. You know, if you have a child at home um, and you're able to to be at home maybe an extra day uh, out of the week, uh, that might work for for some for some parents. Um, I don't know, but. Um, one thing's for sure, though, it will provide a, a, a greater sense of continuity for our business uh, during times when we can't necessarily be in the office to conduct business. You know, these days, technology being as it is, you don't really need to be at a desk in an office to, uh, to be just as productive. So, yeah, And your Sorry. customer transactions, a lot more uh, online, digital? We're seeing a lot more, uh, for sure, we're seeing a lot more uh, digital transactions, no question about that. But, um, you know, the number of visits that we have in our lobby uh, hasn't gone down uh, the same amount as the number of transactions on digital have happened. So we still have, we still have folks that come into our lobbies, but they come in for different reasons. The stuff, the things that they used to come in for check cashing, um, cash accessing, uh, checking balances, paying bills. They can do over a phone, depositing checks. They can do over a phone on the internet or whatever, but they come in because they have a real need. And because we're not having to deal with a lot of the transaction processes, uh, we're able to spend more time in addressing um, real concerns that members have when they, when they do feel they need to come in and sit in front of somebody and, and speak, so. The visits are more robust, and so uh, the transaction processes happen on on using technology. I want to ask you about your new headquarters in a minute, but uh, first, I want to get your your take on uh, the impact of inflation. The Fed is um, raising interest rates. Is that helpful? Does it make people want to save more or not spend their money? Or how, how is it uh, impacting uh, community first? Well, um, uh, just just the quick answer to that question is. Rising interest rates curtail demand, right? And so, uh, where uh, where it's affecting us is on new housing uh, applications coming in for loans. Uh, mortgage loans are our flagship product, and so when rates go up one percent, uh, it affects the buying power of a family um, pretty ex exponentially. So, somebody who would qualify for four hundred fifty thousand dollars, for example, rates go up one percent. They, qual they qualify now for 375 or 380, something in that neighborhood. So it's a real impact. But in terms of inflation altogether, um, this, this is somewhat expected. I mean, no time in history, Nestor, has, uh, have we ever seen a complete stop of not just the demand side, but also the supply side of, uh, of production, right? The, the, uh, the pandemic caused uh, production to stop. People weren't going to work. People weren't producing widgets. Demand also stopped. And so for a period of time, it was okay because nobody was buying anything. Nobody wanted it because, and, and there was nobody supplying it. But that 
12 to 36 months or 28 months of pent up demand. Um, when people were able to go out and spend, as you and I both know, they went crazy, right? They went crazy and they started to spend like crazy. The Ukrainian war didn't help, but even notwithstanding that, people were buying things off the shelf that they wouldn't have bought before. And they had a lot of liquidity in their pockets. Government was giving out a lot of money, uh, federal and local government was giving out a lot of money. So there was a lot of money to be spent, a lot of pent up demand. So uh, people were, were taking advantage of that. While all that demand was happening, production still wasn't moving at the rate that it was, that it used to be moving, right? So uh, supply never caught up with demand. Um, what I think is happening with the rise of interest rates, with the, with the attempt to curtail um, demand is you're taking care of one side of the equation. The bigger side of the equation needs to, needs to be the focus on trying to get supply ramped back up. Uh, once that happens, uh, I think we'll start to see inflation come down in a, in a more dramatic way. You can try to temper demand, but what happens is, as you'll see uh, now, um, people talking about the threat of um, recession, which is also a bad thing, right? We don't want the economy to, uh, to recede, to, to go into negative growth, because that has its own negative repercussions. So um, it's hard for a government to control it, but um, what needs to happen, I think, is supply needs to catch up with uh, demand. So you can bring down demand, but you gotta, you gotta work the other part of the equation in order to really solve long-term what we're seeing. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and it and &E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and it and &E. On a more positive note, tell us about this new uh, uh, headquarters that you got planned. So... Uh, on a much more positive note, we are, we are extremely excited that uh, this is going to be uh, our second piece of property that we own, uh, that the members own, um, but it is going to be our headquarters. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, just under 16 or so thousand square feet of office space located in the heart of Agania, which we believe is the financial center, the capital of our island. Um, it was designed by the late Andy Laguagna. Uh, and it was uh, put together. He did. He's done all our branches, both interior buildouts as well as as well as the exterior uh, buildout in our Tumuni office. But it's going to house. It's going to house uh, administration for sure. It's going to it's going to consolidate a lot of the administrative functions that we have spread out throughout currently throughout our four branch network. It's going to bring them all under one roof, and so there'll be there'll be greater continuity. There'll be greater synergies because we'll all be able to look at each other's face and and uh, discuss and talk and, and hammer through issues rather than the way we do it now which is you know either through zoom or us meeting at one place or another so that's going to be good it'll have training rooms uh it'll have um uh training spaces downstairs and on the second floor um it'll have a branch for sure uh and it's going to have uh, our compliance department and all the relevant spaces. What that's going to do, though, it's also going to free up to our Tumuning office uh, and give it some space so that we can consolidate uh, our loan departments. Our loan departments are spread over two branches. Uh, it's going to be able to we'll be able to now consolidate those those branches and have Tumuning be what it was built to do, which is be our production center. Uh, so we will house all our loan production out of our terminating office. It's central. It's easy. Parking's easier. Um, and then uh, it'll leave <clears throat> our, our Mingilao office to do what it's supposed to do. And that's our research and development center and our training center. So we have our students uh, out of that student run credit union. Um, and they do all the, the, the R and D for our products. They test it, tool it, um, and, and let us know what's wrong with it. Uh, but it also is a training ground where we have our little incubator system uh, in developing uh, other employees. So all our different uh, branches will, are, are set up for, for uh, a specific purpose. And this branch is gonna allow us to uh, complete, that, complete that function. All right, so the future looks good for Community First. 
we're excited. You know, we're, we're, what makes us really excited is the, is the excitement that we have in Guam. You know, we're really bullish uh, around the economy of Guam. We are going through a short-term issue. And these things are cyclical. What's happening now is by no means secular. So um, we'll get through it. And I think we're going to get through it quicker than, than most. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, um, are in the horizon for Guam that are very promising, notwithstanding what's happening now. I mean, the military... The military function on island is a, is a great stabilizing factor. Their presence is uh, an, a, an amazing economic engine just in and of itself. So that we have that going for Guam, we haven't even begun to see the, the return of tourism yet. Um, and so there are other elements on Guam that have yet to, to you know, wrap back up and become pre-pandemic so, uh, or at pre-pandemic rate. So, uh, given where we are right now, uh, the future is very bright and we're very bullish about it. And, and it's not just for community first. This is going to be a, a tide that's high for everybody that's on Guam that's willing to participate in, um, in what's in store. I, we're confident. I mean, if I haven't been able to, ex to explain or to demonstrate just, just where I think we are on this precipice of economic, you know, dynamism, you know, it's just going to be great. So, so yeah, we're very excited about what's going to happen, um, and we're very positioned, uh, very well positioned to take advantage of, of those opportunities as we see it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Jerry Cruz is the president and CEO of Community First Guam Federal Credit Union. Happy anniversary, 60th. Thanks, Nestor. Thank you very much. All right, Nestor Lacanto. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on In Full Zoom. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E.